On this episode of System Integrators Weekly, we're going to be taking a look at the latest systems from EK Fluid Gaming, because right after this video, I'm going to be doing a live unboxing of one of their systems. All that and more on this episode of SI Weekly. Let's go, nerds! Hello, everyone. I am Brea Thorne. Welcome to System Integrators Weekly. And uh, yes, I, you know, still, still, still working on stuff here. You see a little camera just hanging down from the ceiling right there and just stuffed all over the place because I'm preparing to do um, an unboxing stream for the first time in this room right after this video. So if you're watching the premiere as this comes out, it's going to link right to the stream right afterwards, which is going to be super cool as long as everything's ready and there are no technical problems, which Eh? We're going to have really cool stuff set up in here, and I will definitely, once I'm done with this, because I have big plans for this room that I've been actually making happen, uh, I will do a tour video and it'll be super cool. But in the meantime, we have computers to talk about, and we are going to be talking about the pre-built PCs from EK Fluid Gaming. EK Fluid Gaming used to just be their uh, hardline liquid cooled pre-built systems, but now they have a whole gamut of systems from stuff with AIOs to all the way up to their custom liquid cooled stuff so it's very cool uh uses our matrix 7 uh setup stuff so we'll go over all that during the video and um speaking of the video uh, it is sponsored by vip cdk deals the best place to go when you want to get yourself an oem windows license to get rid of that annoying watermark and unlock all the customization windows has to offer so instead of paying well over $100 for a retail version of Windows, you can get an OEM key for a fraction of the price. Plus, you can use my code BRAY25 to get a nice fat discount off of the already discounted price. Keep in mind that this is an OEM key that gets attached to this system and cannot be used with another one or if you change your hardware. Make sure you get the right key for your operating system. For more information on how to use CDK deals, click the link in the description saying here's how it works and I'll walk you through the whole thing. Thank you, CDK deals for continuing to support the channel. If you're looking at anything from like 1500 bucks to like $2,000, maybe $2,500, I would suggest holding off until reviews come out for the uh, new AMD GPUs, the Radeon RX 7800 XT and 7700 XT, because those are shaping up to potentially be a very good value if the numbers match up with the first party claims put forth by AMD during their launch event their keynote. So uh, you always got to wait for third party reviews for that kind of thing. So, you know, in a couple of days, that stuff will be out. But um, yes, what I said earlier is true. Um, right after this video uh, that we're probably watching all together right now, if I do an instant premiere, it will link over to the stream where I'm going to be unboxing one of these systems and putting it through a couple little tests, things like that. We're going to open it up, take a look at the insides and uh, see how uh, EK Fluid Gaming did their thing. If I'm feeling particularly spicy, uh, maybe I'll break out the uh, the square and we'll see just how 90 degree their 90 degree bends are. Who knows? Um, they don't really do bends. They're using the Matrix 7 system. So it's all kind of it's really, really interesting. And we'll look at some of that stuff here in a bit. And if you're wondering, no, I have I'm not at PAX West. I skipped it this year uh, just because as far as I knew, Intel and AMD both backed out. Uh, if they changed their minds, they weren't very vocal about it or didn't tell me. So, um, and most SIs that I know of weren't really going to be going. So it didn't make a whole lot of sense. It didn't really, that wasn't really justified for me to get up there, nor did I have any sponsorship offered to go up there. So I was like, I guess one packs a year is going to be good enough for me. Still hoping to go to TwitchCon. I do have some stuff planned with Motion Studio up there. So if you're heading to that event, uh, let me know so I can say hi. Now, disclaimers, this video is being filmed for September 4th. 2023 any pricing and availability that you see here is subject to change if you watch this video uh weeks or months later pricing probably changed because guess what this is hardware launching season and new stuff is going to be coming out secondly you're going to hear my opinions and um that is going to be fine it'll be fine i promise uh if you have differing opinions that's also fine i promise put them in the comments below i'm totally cool with that and um, as long as it's not the usual, like, oh, everyone in the world should build their own PCs and pre built should be shot out of a cannon into space. Actually, that'd be kind of awesome. But like, no, uh, I will refer you to this video if you have any comments like that. The last one is this is not financial advice. I'm just going over some of the things that I see 
and giving my opinion on them. See disclaimer two for that part. All this stuff, these videos are for the purpose of helping you familiarize yourself with the pre-built industry so you can make an educated decision for yourself. Because whether or not these PCs are good, that doesn't necessarily mean they're good or bad for you because you have specific needs and expectations and budgetary needs. So that's all you. Now taking a look here, we are on the EK Fluid Gaming uh, website here. And yeah, it's kind of weird to do an episode where it's focused on just one SI, but I have done this before and it makes a lot of sense this time because I'm gonna be looking at one of these systems. I will say that I like EK Fluid Gaming's website. It's nice, simple, to the point. Uh, you have, you know, your scrolling marquee up here of four different things, yada, yada, but right under that, you can choose what you want. Do you want to go with, look at all the gaming PCs? Do you want to just look, look at the ones with AIOs, all-in-one liquid coolers? Or do you want to go for a quantum-powered, fully liquid-cooled system? Now, a quick note about this. Uh, there's always the thought that, uh, in a statement, which most of us understand this, it's not a revelation when you say something like, you know, it's cheaper to build it yourself. Yeah, of course. It's, it, oil changes are cheaper if you do them yourself. Every meal could be cheaper if you cooked it for yourself. Do you do that? Let other people buy a pre-built PC, all right? But even with that in mind, if you were to DIY and fully liquid cold custom hardline system, hardline cu custom loop, uh, you're generally talking about $800 to $1,500 worth just in hardware. If you're doing you know, CPU block, GPU block, bunch of tubing, um, something like a distro plate, pump, reservoir, all that stuff, it's very expensive. Um, and uh, what EK chooses to do, what they're offering to do, is if you want that kind of system and you want the extra cooling capacity that it offers with how hot CPUs run these days and GPUs, if that's something that you want, they'll do the work for you. You still have to pay for the hardware, obviously, but they'll do the work for you and warranty it. That comes with a cost. And if you find, when I'm telling, talking about the prices, that, oh, that sounds like way too much, then it's not for you. It's not, it's not something that should interest you if, you if you don't find value in it. If you see one of these systems and you're like, you know, I've always wanted one of those with the tubes and the liquid and lights and the gaming. If that's you and you're like, yeah, you know what? I could pay that. Yeah, okay. Then it is for you. Value is subjective, okay? If you don't see value in what they're offering, that's subjective to you. That's okay. That's fine. But it's no reason to get upset because I've seen whenever I bring up a boutique builder of any kind, there's been some like vitriol in the comments of like, I can't believe it costs this much. We're not talking about, you know, what is it? Overkill PC type of type of pricing here. Okay where it's like literally double what it would cost you to build it yourself. We're not talking about that, okay? But there's gonna be markup, there's overhead. They have to pay the bills. They gotta pay the electric the electric bill there. They gotta pay all their builders and take care of them. Taxes, insurance, all that stuff. There's overhead when it comes to doing pre-builds. That money's gotta come from somewhere because I'll tell you what, it sure doesn't come from those razor thin profit margins on PC hardware. Yikes. Why liquid cooling? All right, just had to lube the word tube. Okay, oh, I'm never saying that sentence again. Your gaming PC works hard to create the ultimate 4K gaming experience, squeezing every drop of performance from your CPU and GPU to get the best graphics and the smoothest gameplay. As your CPU and GPU reach over 90 degrees Celsius, your gaming PC will begin to throttle the performance of your components in an attempt to lower their running temps, meaning your games won't run as smoothly. By replacing your stock air cooler with a custom EK water block, you can apply liquid coolant directly to your CPU and GPU, ensuring ultra low temps and maximum gaming performance. There you go. How does it work? This is a pretty cool page though. If really, if this like a robot voice or whatnot, um, this right here is a great place to start. If you're like, this doesn't make sense to me. Why would I want this? This says why you might want it. And EK does go out of their way to provide a lot of, you know, background info, tutorials, things like that. So that's really cool on them, which is good because if you get yourself a hardline liquid cooled system with a reservoir, you're gonna need to flush that out sometimes. 
you will need to replace the liquid. Let's go back to the main page here and just go to all gaming PCs and see what we got. So right off the bat, EK Fluid Gaming just doesn't just do $5,000 systems. Clearly, you have a system here. Uh, it's EK F150 uh, Esports Gaming PC uh, for $12.99. Now, uh, this is kind of getting you into the EK Fluid Gaming ecosystem here for not a lot of money, but let's see what you get for that. So this is not anything that is really out of the ballpark for your average new builder to do if you wanted to build it yourself. You basically have a regular system with an all-in-one liquid cooler that you can actually purchase from EK if you want to and get one right from them directly. So we've got a, uh, this is a Ryzen 5000 series system with a 5600X and a 4060. Now, I, I would say EK, a little note for you guys, but for that generation of Ryzen processors, 3600 mega transfers per second memory was actually the sweet spot uh, to get one-to-one -one synchronization. So I would just shift that over to going with 3600 mega transfers per second. Uh, but yeah, 5600X, 4060 will get you some great 1080p gaming performance. And I mean, you're looking at 1300 bucks and there you go. And also you get World of Warships bundle, Jay goes out to you buddy there you go now here's another thing this is one of this is their lowest price system and they don't shoehorn a 500 gig m.2 drive in there and said you get a full terabyte that's what you're getting for going a little bit more a little bit pricier on your system in general they're also telling you what kind it is pcie gen 4 750 watt lian Li sfx 80 plus gold power supply this is not a budget system in the traditional sense where you're cutting corners everywhere you can this is this is quite good uh, when it comes to the type of system you're looking at. The only thing I would talk about is the RAM frequency not being ideal for this 5600X. It's not gonna leave that much performance on the table, but it does leave some. Plus, look at this, look at this. Three year warranty for parts, labor, and return and support. Just because I have a system from EK, EK Fluid Gaming uh, waiting to be unboxed, this isn't sponsored content. I mean, it is, it's sponsored by the sponsor that I said earlier. Okay. not by EK Fluid Gaming. And neither is the unboxing stream and the video that will come from it. That's not sponsored. They just send it over for me to take a look at it. I don't get to keep it. It's gonna go back to them. Uh, keep that in mind. I'm also not talking off of like, they don't give me talking points here. I'm just doing my thing, where, which is something I do every week where I just go and look at different system integrators and see what they got. It's just been a criminally long time since I've looked at EK Fluid Gaming. Now. This one right here, it's on sale, is an interesting one. I'd like to take a look at it. So with this one, you're looking at a 7600X CPU and a 4070 Ti GPU. Now these are, I, I should of course mention uh, the case that these are using, okay? It's a Lian Li PC 011 Dynamic Mini. 011, it's an 011 Mini. It's really nice looking. I do wish they had gone with the white fans. I believe they make white fans. Uh, I think that would have looked a little bit nicer, but I can tell a few important things here. They are setting up for side intake and bottom intake. I can't tell you how many times I've been frustrated looking at the 011 style chassis being misused, where they'll just put the fans on the side because you see those, but they don't put the fans in the bottom because it's not immediately apparent if you're looking at it just straight on from the side with the pictures that they take. You don't see that they're not getting them some of the most important intake on that, or they'll set up the side fans. And this is a matter of some debate uh, the set up the side fans as exhaust, which sets up for an, uh, a negative pressure airflow setup, which I prefer positive airflow. Here you're looking at five fans for intake right here, one, two, three, four, five, and four fans for exhaust, all of them 120 millimeter, okay? And these have to deal, the ones on the top have to deal with these having, having to push out that static pressure through the radiator so there's some resistance. So yes, you have a positive pressure airflow setup in here. That is much better for uh, keeping dust out of your system. Something to keep in mind. Now this one's $21.99. It has 32 gigs of 6,000 mega transfer per second DDR5, a uh, Ryzen 5 7600, and a 4070 Ti. This thing, 1440p gaming all day long. And uh, two terabytes PCIe Gen 4 drive. Remember that there is more to the PC than just your CPU and GPU. Clearly EK knows that. So you guys know when I was looking at like uh, main gear and saying like, I don't think that this thing should have this kind of storage at this price point, you know, 
$2,500 and it has just a single terabyte or $3,500 still with a single terabyte of storage. This is 2100 with a two terabyte Gen 4 M.2 drive. That's what I need when I say that stuff. Their $1,200 system or $1,299 system has a one terabyte Gen 4 drive. That's what everyone, that's what SIs should be buying, in my opinion. The still 750 watt Leanly SFX 80 plus gold power supply. Um, and those are, of course, I believe fully modular. Uh, this one gets the AIO Elite 360 millimeter DRGB AIO. And uh, yeah, you're still looking at fairly standard systems here, but decently priced considering that, you know, they're they're kind of touching on everything here. Larger storage, uh, brand name power supply, well spec memory, although AMD, I'm not ha happy with at least the, the Ryzen team right now because of the new Ajisa that they released that changes the sweet spot for RAM. Little aside here, uh, AMD, how long was 3600 the sweet spot for like 3000 series Ryzen, 5000 series Ryzen? It hasn't changed. 3600 was the sweet spot and still is. So people who buy nice kits of the capacity of RAM that they need at that frequency are good. I get it if you want to add capability to go with a higher frequency, like 8,000 or whatever. Don't change the sweet spot. You can't do that to people who are investing in your platform and bought like 32, 64 gig kits of 6,000 mega transfer per second. Hello, me, I did that. You just change the sweet spot and that kit is suddenly non-optimal. You never, you didn't do that before. What the heck? And keep in mind that this socket right here, socket AM5, is gonna be good for a few more years. So you should be getting more CPUs that will socket right into this system if you want to upgrade your CPU two generations from now and get that multi-generational uplift in performance. Very nice, we love to see it. Uh, Gaming 130, so 7600X, 4060 Ti. 5600X, 4070 Ti. So you're, there's this kind of thing going back and forth so you have the battle and then you have the gaming. Okay, I see what's going on here. So the battle system is kind of a more uh, varied use system. And the gaming one focuses less on the CPU motherboard and platform and more on GPU performance. I get that because that's where you're gonna see most of the performance benefit is in the GPU if you get a higher end GPU. Now we, we see though right here, there's a pretty big jump up in price. But really quick before we go to that, I want to take a look at this gaming system here for 1849. I want to see, and by the way, once the 77 uh, XT and 7700 XT and 7800 XT come out, I expect to see some pretty cool changes here. So yeah, here, so here's, so there's some a, a mixed bag here, right? So for 1850, I think you should be at 32 gigs of DDR4. DDR4 is not expensive. However, you do get two terabytes. Uh, and two, a two terabyte M.2 drive, and it does not specify Gen 4, so I'm fairly certain that's a Gen 3 drive, which is still very fast. If you're coming off of some kind of older storage, like uh, SATA, uh, a SATA SSD or spinning hard drive, man, that'll be a big, big improvement. You're gonna see improvements on your, for in, in, in load times, uh, how snappy Windows is, all that good stuff. Now, once we get up to here though, getting over here, that's when you start to see the higher end systems. This one actually is in the old, the standard O11 dynamic, so it's larger than the O11 mini. Who would have thought? But this one is uh, powered by the 7900 XTX and a Ryzen 9 7900 X3D. Now, I'm not a big fan of the 7900 X3D uh, myself. Uh, they they should have gone with eight uh, 3D eight cores with 3D cache and four cores with standard cache. Uh, instead, they went six and six. So you get less gaming performance from it than the 7800X3D, which costs less. But this system is otherwise really, really nice, uh, as it should be for, you know, 3299. But you are getting some of the best of the best here, okay? Um, 7900XTX is the top of the line GPU, period. And if you're interested in playing Starfield, which you should be, it's really, really cool. And not that, um, I paid an extra $30 to play it early. So uh, Gamers Nexus posted a video with their day one benchmarks and uh, the 7900 XTX is 
nearly neck to neck with the 4090. Like for once. Um, probably has something to do with the fact that it's like an AMD game. This right here could play Starfield like as well as a system with a 4090. But still, you know, 3299, three year parts and labor warranty, all that good stuff, ready to go. And they're using like the streamer cables on this because they can, because it, 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 why not, right? I mean, there's a lot of extra work put into the system. Uh, and then there's just gonna be various systems with those kind of configs up until this point right here. So we'll take a peek at some of these price versus the parts you get. Uh, let's see, 2849 for a 7800X 3D and a 4070Ti. This is a battle system. 7800X 3D with a 7900 XT. Okay, for 2849, I would probably go with this right here. Between these two for the same price, go with this guy. Um, my reasoning for that is that the 7900 XT is going to outperform a 4070Ti. Then you have this, this ab absolute monster right here, which again, these are out of order. Guys, I set this to sort by price, EK, and it's not doing that. Like the prices are all mixed up. Uh, let's, so let's see, 7950X 3D, 4090, four, four grand. Done, there you go. Basically one of the best ships you can buy. And uh, you know, despite the, the core parking and all that, still, very capable in in both cases because if this if you're doing something like oh i edit video but also i do gaming this is going to be uh, a really good option and more efficient than something like a 13900k 7800x 3d and a 4080 4k gaming all day long on this sucker right here 3149 so this is a really good one two terabyte gen 4 there you go uh 32 gigs ddr5 6000 a B650 though, a B650, which it's okay. I would expect for 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 3150 uh, X670. Now the when that would come into play is if you're talking about someone who wants to have a streaming system that they also gaming and streaming all in one system. You're gonna need a lot of I/O for that, and uh, you know B650 does lose some I/O, like literally from the chipset. So yeah. I would definitely change this to a uh, uh, X670 or X670E. Uh, 1000 watt EVGA gold, 80 plus gold, uh, GQ PSU. All right, plus RTX 4080. Like I said, 4K gaming all day long on this system. And then um, 79, 7950X 3D and 4080. So this is more along the lines of if you're gonna be doing any kind of production, multi-threaded processes, things like that. So this one's gonna be a better option for you. And this is where we get to the uh, hardline liquid cooled systems, which is what we're going to be unboxing in a little bit. It's one of these. I actually, uh, they've been a bit coy with me as to which system they sent. And because I unbox on stream as part of the experience, I haven't taken it out of the box and seen it for myself. The whole point of my unboxing and testing streams is to, to, to share the experience of removing it from the box setting it up for the first time, seeing how everything's packaged because packaging is so critical for these systems. Um, and then just taking it for a ride. We test thermals, make sure it's thermally capable of cooling the parts that are installed in there. Things like that. We look for errors, mistakes, QC issues, things like that. So that's what we look for uh, during my unboxings, which turn into my reviews. It's not component reviews. It's, it's uh, the sum of its parts rather. So there are six systems here that have the uh, hardline liquid cooled setup there. And they range from uh, 5,300 bucks up to $6,300, okay? And 5,300 is a 7,800 X3D and a 4080 system right here. I'm gonna be real with you. One of the main reasons that uh, enthusiasts that have been doing this for a while will do a hardline custom loop or even any custom liquid cooling loop is for the purpose of overclocking and any 3D cache equipped processors cannot be overclocked and they generally run more efficient than their non 3D cache brethren. Uh, what I'm saying there is uh, you may have limited utility when it comes to having a custom loop for something like a 7800X3D or a 7900X3D or 7950X3D because overclocking is not a thing that you can 
do in the normal sense with those chips. They do have their own boost capabilities, their own boost behaviors, but you're, you're not doing that yourself. That being said, keeping it cooler can make it last longer. You're talking not just about performance when it comes to cooling, we're talking also about longevity, okay? So there is that to consider. And besides which, if you're buying a pre-built, either you're the type who is experienced with this stuff and you just don't have the time to build your own PC or you're just done with it. It's a hobby you did a long time ago and you're like, I just want to get a pre-built now. Totally fine. Or you're new to this hobby. You're new to PCs and it should be considered that there is extra maintenance involved with a hardline loop and uh, that's every, you know, it's going to have instructions in there. We'll take a look at that. But I would say every six to eight months, maybe a year, if it's a totally clear liquid and not opaque in any way, where you would have to drain the system, flush it out, and then put in new coolant. It's not a difficult process, just a bit time consuming. But we're going to go over that. And in fact, if you want me to work with EK on this stuff, we'll make a, a, a video on specifically about maintaining a liquid cooled system. What do you think? So 7800X3D and 4080. Uh, that 4080 can definitely put out some heat. You're looking at a system that has dual 360 millimeter radiators. That is definitely adequate to the task here with the 7800X3D and the 4080. In, in fact, it's a little bit, I wouldn't say overkill, but it's definitely going to handle it. Uh, the system's got two terabyte M.2. It does not say Gen 4, but it has another one. It's got dual two terabyte M.2 drives. Now, why is that awesome? Well, because getting to the spot where you're gonna be putting in a new M.2 if you're gonna expand your storage is a little more difficult when you're talking about having tubes there, okay? You got tubes in the way. You've also got a EK Quantum MSI MPG X670E Carbon EKX DRGB. By the way, this was designed to be used with EK's monoblock. I mean, it is, it is a motherboard where they collaborated with EK and the monoblock should be cooling the VRMs as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, PSU cables are custom braided 8 and 24 pin cables. And uh, this is in the O11D Evo. You can tell because it is inverted. So what that means is this PC, for you to get the most visual benefit out of it, you'd have on the left side of your desk. Uh, inverting the system is something that they allowed for with the O11 Evo. By the way, I do know for a fact that these uh, front distro plates do include uh, a drain and fill port. So very, very much easier for uh, for maintenance. That's, that's that's really cool. It's a really cool system. Uh, you also have the EK Conqueror with 13900K and 4090 for 6300 bucks. That's their most expensive one. I am curious. Let's see what they did with things like storage and power supply here, because that's a lot of power that this thing's going to draw. 1000 watt, 80 plus gold. Well, it should be able to handle it. I would have gone probably a 1200 watt on this one. It, depending on the BIOS and the motherboard, I mean, this thing can pull a ton of power, push a ton of power into the CPU. Uh, that 13900K can run really hot and take a ton of power. And then 4090, it doesn't have the same transient power spikes that the 3090 did and 3090Ti. Uh, those were really bad, but they, it can spike a bit. Now, this is the O11D XL, but it looks absolutely sick. I do like the O11 XL. Uh, I ran that case for a while. I like the hot swap um, hard drives that you can do with it. No, this is a nice system though. And still the, the, the dual two terabyte M.2 drives, so four total terabytes of storage. So they're thinking about it. They're like, hey, this is gonna cost a lot. Let's give them a lot of storage so they don't have to get into the system and mess with it. But then you have the uh, 13900K4090 system in the O11 Evo as well as an option. And it is a decent amount cheaper than the, uh, the O11 XL system. It's gonna be pretty similar, I'm fairly certain. Yes, two terabytes, two terabytes, total of four. Um, sort of the same uh, level of MSI motherboard, 32 gigs of RAM, 4090, 13900K, all liquid cooled, custom braided cables. Uh, I mean, this is all the stuff that like an enthusiast would do with their system. So remember this guys, that system is $5,800, okay? But you're talking about a massive distro plate for the front of there, GPU block, CPU block, all the fittings, the pump, the all the tubes, everything, the labor of putting it together, filling, you know, testing it for leaks, filling it, all of that stuff. So add about fifteen hundred bucks to what you would pay at another system integrator for a thirteen nine hundred K and forty ninety system. 
it's right about in line with what you'll pay for that. So, yeah, I, I think it's actually quite, quite good. But we want to see just how exciting it is to unbox one, take a look at it. Um, we're going to be just, we're going to get, we're going to get to play with some pretty cool toys here. So I think I'm going to call it for right now for covering the website. That's the website. There you go. Great warranty. Three years support, parts, labor, return, shipping is what it looks like. If that's incorrect, I'll put a correction here. I'm not sure what exactly it means. Um, but the good thing that I'm seeing here is the attention to detail. If you're going to be paying this much for a system and it's also got hard lines on it, you know, hard line tubing, let's go ahead and put two. M.2 drives in there, bam, four total terabytes of storage. That'll get you going for a long time. It's much better than a lot of these other SIs out here that are selling $3,500 or $3, systems with one terabyte of storage. I mean, what the heck? I am excited to open this thing. So uh, if you're watching this later on, uh, go ahead and you can check out the stream. I'll put the link for that right here. Or if the edited video comes out, I'll swap out this link right here for the one to the edited review of the system with of course, you know, a banging montage at the beginning. You know, I like to do my montages. So uh, I think that'll do it. Thank you guys for watching. And let's uh, let's scoot on over to that review and, and take a look. This place is gonna look really different because that's in like two, three days. So uh, see you guys in a bit. Until then, take care. Thank you.